Welcome to a brand new series on this channel. In this series, we're going to go over all of the object modifiers. As you can see here, we have a few tabs within the modify page. We have our modifiers, generate, deform, and physics. In this video today, we're going to go over the generate tab, and we're going to take a look at the array modifier. So once you click on array, once you have an object selected, you can see that it has doubled up the default cube here. If we look on the right, we can see that the fit type is a fixed count and the count is two. If we increase the count, it increases the number of cubes that it is duplicating or arraying. Now our relative offset here by a factor of X is one, meaning it's gonna move one whole meter as Blender uses meters in the X coordinate. If we change that to two, you can see it has left a perfect cube space, a one meter by one meter cube in the middle. If we change it to 1.2, we can see we get a relatively small gap in between and if we increase the count it will affect every single one. We also have the Y factor here which will move in the Y axis and the Z factor here which will move in the Z axis up and down and that's for a relative offset. We also have other offsets here so if we deselect relative and select constant probably noticing our constant offset is affecting it differently to our relative. Because it's a constant offset, the offset is not changing relative to the original default cube. So if we switch back to relative offset here, to a factor of x by 2, factor of y by 1, a factor of z by 1, uh, we'll just take a look here at our array. You can see it is a relative offset to our default cube of these factors and you can see it's very spaced out in between. Now we're, we're going to use the same parameters here, 2, 1, 1, and we're going to use that in our constant offset. So 2, 1, 1, and you can see a major difference. The offset is not relative to the default cube. The offset is constant from the origin point. So that's zero meters on our X, or just about, and it's pretty much inside the cube. We get to, one meter here, you can see that's affected from our origin point, or our, our point of origin. And we'll get that to two, and it's just a very small gap in between. So that's the difference between our relative and constant. Relative is relative to the objects. Constant is based on the point of origin that the array is from. And then we also have object offset. So what we can do here is we can add in a another cube and we'll just bring that over here. Go back into our object offset here and target the cube. And you can see it will now array upon our cube that we selected. And this will array the same distance between each, between the targeted cube and our cube that we've got our array set on. So if we deselect object offset and move this further go back here and select it you can see our array is an equal distance between each other and now we also have the merge function here which will merge vertices in adjacent duplicates so with our merge selected here what this will do is if our array let's say we've got it on constant offset and it's less than two meters and you can see they're intersecting. What will happen is these objects will now merge rather than go through each other. Next we have the UVs and we have offset UVs, uh, UNV. And this would be once you've applied textures. Um, if you want to array it with a continuous texture but it's not, not working correctly, you can mess around with the offset UVs. Um, that's pretty much that it's pretty self-explanatory for the last section here on the array modifier the caps what i've gone ahead and done is modify the default cube so if we just turn that count off i have extended the cube lengthways and i've just deleted the faces either side so what we can do now is we can increase this count as much as we want and what i've also done is created from another cube, I've just extended it and extruded some faces. 
created two of those. So what we can do is if we go to our caps, we can eyedrop it all the cap start, which will be that one, and eyedrop it all the cap end, which is that one. And you can see what that has done to our final array here. So we've got our arrayed cube here and our cap start and our cap end. And that's it for the caps, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one issue that I did run into, um, which I'll show you here, for the cap start, I actually deleted this face just so it wouldn't intersect inside here. It would join, it would merge uh, really nicely. Uh, but for the last one here, I had to duplicate this either side uh, because there was an issue where I had deleted these faces here so it would join up. And I'll show you what, that, what happened when I did that. We just select those faces, delete those faces. So now this is the exact replica of this end. I'll get rid of that. Now I drop a this cube. No, that's fine. Working fine now. Wasn't earlier. That makes no sense. <laughs> okay, well, that's that for the caps then. Um, if you do run into the issue where you try to do a cap end and it's just doing the uh, showing the exact same as the cap start, which was the issue that I was running into, um, I basically just made it so either which way wanted to go inwards into the cube, I just extended that. So if it if this one wanted to go in, yeah, you get the idea. Anyways, that's for the caps. Um, like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, if you wanted to do something like a bridge, this would be great. And I'll demonstrate that right here. So we'll just hide these. Um, we can apply that now, because that's working. We can select this, add a modifier, add a new array. And instead of doing it on the X, I'm going to get rid of that and do it on the Y. So you can see here, you could make something like a train track or anything that you hard to tie. Let's just hide that for now, and I'll show you what I mean here. So we can select these faces, extrude them. I uh, just extrude these faces here. So now it's like a solid. I'll turn that back on, and you can see it's almost like a, it's almost like a train track now. That's a really cool way to do that. Of course, you don't have to do two arrays. You could just create this one object first and then array it. Um, but we did it with two arrays to save time. So that's an example of what you can do with the array modifier using uh, relative offset, constant offset, object offset, uh, using the caps um, as we did previously. We created this one section and did a cap end and cap start uh, by using these two here. But that's it for the array modifier here. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's any other modifiers you'd like me to go over in the next video and I'll take a look at those and get it done for you. See you in the next one.